I tried and tried to talk him into to dropping an ounce. You know, still use your 34 uh -huh. and a half, but drop to 31. It took him a while. He ended up doing it, but. How many guys want plate coverage? 34 and a half. How many guys still want to go a little bit shorter because this is mine? You know, it, it's all guys got to have plate coverage. It's just a matter of how close you got to get to the plate to have it. And so shorter bats, usually guys are a little bit closer. Longer bats are a little further off. But it, that, that's not always the case either. Did you used to see back in the day more <clears throat> closed, more open? It's majority here, but do most guys play it square now? Pretty, pretty square to open. Back in when I played, there were a lot more closed right. stances, um, but that's kind of gone by the wayside because it's, it's, not, it's not a real good position to be in just because you get tied up on the inner half. You can't, you can't get can't your get back your side way. through. Um, now it had nothing to do with getting out of the way. It's just more of what pitches you can handle and, and can you maximize your power. So square is more what Square's guys are doing. Square is better to slightly open. What's yeah. your theory on loaded? Do you care? Where they got to the major leagues. You know, Ripken we talk about all the time. He might have <clears throat> hands in three different places during a game. Right. Your whole idea, I'm assuming, is swing plane. Do you right. care how they get there? You just want consistency to get there. Well, it, it varies based on the hitter and what kind of swing he has okay. and how much is going on, but from a... A fundamentally sound standpoint, you know, I like the hands about armpit high to shoulder high, not too high. But if guys do start off higher, as long as they get into that good position right. to fire on time, that's all I care about. So I don't care if they're low, high, wherever. But bottom line is, is that if they're not making the move early enough, right. then it's a problem. So, you know, Acuna last year, when he first came up, he had his hands kind of up by his face. They were closer. He had a big leg kick and a big takeaway. Well, this big takeaway was causing his timing to be off. He wasn't getting his hands to that ready position on time. He wasn't going soon enough. So we got his hands back a little bit more to where he had less distance to travel to be on time. And it was, it was a big game changer for him. What about bad angle? Um, Again, it depends on the swing and mm -hmm. the position they get into. Where they start, again, I don't care as long as they get into a good spot. Um, in a perfect world, bat 45. If flat's zero and straight up is 90, about 45 with a little slight angle, not to go past the head to where it's a wrap. Okay. But I don't like the bat laid back because it becomes more back this way because it becomes more of a sweep and you lose leverage. So about here with just a slight angle, right, right here. So when they take their hands back, a lot of times guys will yeah. set and they'll get their bat, bat head past their head and that's too long a distance to go to get back to contact. 12-6, there's not a ton of them. Is it just <laughs> if he makes a good one, he makes a good one? I mean, obviously you want to attack anything you can. People are talking about launch angles. I was told higher fastball, if you can drop one, which not a lot of guys can do, that sort of mitigates. Does that take away this whole idea of launch angle? Um, no, I mean, launch angle, people ask me all the time what my thoughts are on yeah. launch angle. Is it important? I said, absolutely, it's important. And exit velocity is important. And, and really all launch angle and exit velocity are, are the ability to measure how the ball comes off the bat. You hit it hard, you got a better chance to get a hit. Right. But for a hundred years, back when I played, we were all trying to hit line drives into the outfield, into the gaps and out of the park. Right. Well, that's what good launch angle is. You know, 10 to 25 degrees is great launch angle. Those are line drives into yep. the outfield, into the gaps, out of the park. So nothing's changed as far as what I've ever taught or tried to get guys to do. Mm -hmm. We didn't like soft contact rollovers. We didn't like soft contact pop-ups. We didn't like fly outs. We didn't like strikeouts. Nothing's changed. Right. Things become a little more accepted, but the whole goal is to hit the sucker hard and hit it on a line and let the misses of line drives be homers. And, you know, depending on the size of the guy, the, the ballpark, mm -hmm. the wind, all dictates how many homers they hit. But you know, bottom line is, is launch angle, since the launch angle revolution, the term has come about, yeah. 
you know, the, the travesty for me is young kids think they got to try and lift. Oh. And then once a loop gets created back here, now we're talking swings and misses and fly outs and foul balls. And that's, that's a bad deal. Guy hitters need to be on plane, stay on plane as long as possible. And that's the key to being a good hitter. So let me ask you, if you're, how, how can you check balance on me? Because balance, how, how do you know where my weight is? Can you literally push me on each side to figure out if, I have, if I'm balanced? Yeah, you're balanced right now. If you were leaning back, you'd be a little more on your back side. If you were leaning forward on your front side. But again, how you start doesn't matter to me as long as you, there's, there's some sort of load and weight transfer into your swing and staying on balance, staying in a strong position on the finish. That's the big key for balance is you want to be strong in your legs throughout your swing. Okay. And there's going to be the leg kick or a glide back or a tap that hitters will use to get, get back. And then as they go into the weight shift, they want to be hitting against their front side, not on the front right. side. If they get too far forward, then they have a tendency to be too top heavy, they lose hand speed, they get too steep with their swing path. There's a lot of stuff that goes wrong. And if you sit on your backside too much, now we, we call that a back foot spinner where they sit and they come off the ball. They don't maximize the power because there's no weight transfer. It's kind of like a pitcher rocking back and then throwing and not nothing. having any finish 